Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, August the 28th. We will sing several songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be beneficial uh, and uplifting to you. We are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the title of the song in case you don't have that book and you want to sing with us. You can either Google it or use whatever book that you have if you uh, uh, have a song book with you. The last song that we sing is a, is a children's song that's not in the book. So hope you know the song. So let's start our services this evening with number 67, For the Beauty of the Earth. 67 for the beauty of the earth <clears throat> for the beauty of the earth for the beauty of the skies for the love of from our birth over and around us lies Lord of all to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night hill and vale and tree and flower <coughs> Sun and moon and stars of light. <coughs> Lord of all, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for thy church that <coughs> lifteth holy hands above. Offering upon every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. 103. He has made me glad. One. O oh, three, he has made me glad. <clears throat> I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. A song before the Lord's Supper is number three. 35, 335, in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> in memory of the Savior's love, 335. <clears throat> in 
in memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast, where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life, with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner, thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of love. We are instructed on the first day of the week to break bread. Uh, that means, according to Acts chapter 20, verse 7, that we are to observe the Lord's Supper. It is one of the things that we are to do every time we meet on the first day of the week. It is uh, probably the bedrock of what we do as we remember uh, God's uh, wonderful plan for us, that while we were yet sinners, he sent Jesus to us. And Jesus was the perfect sacrifice <laughs> that ended all the uh, the physical sacrifices that were made under the old law because he was that perfect and wonderful sacrifice. We see it in the emblems. We see it in the bread that represents his body. We see it in the fruit of the vine that represents his cup. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to give up his body for us that he was willing to die that cruel death on Calvary's cross. As we partake of the bread, help us to understand that the physical nature of that sacrifice and also all of the spiritual implications that it has. Be with us as we partake, we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our Heavenly Father, we know that the blood that courses through our body carries all of the life-giving elements all through our body so that we might live. We know that Jesus shed his innocent blood, and as the blood poured from him, uh, he eventually died on that cross. But it was that blood and the symbol that is there for us that that blood is the New Testament of our salvation, that through his blood that we can have redemption, and through his blood that we can have forgiveness of our sins. Be with us as we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper, but for convenience sake at this time, uh, we do something else that we are instructed to do, on, to do on the first day of the week, and that is give back to the Lord. We have so many examples of, of giving in the Bible and even the physical means of giving. When one church would give to help another church, when there was a famine in one place and a church gave, we have the example of the widow giving of her money in the temple. And uh, just over and over and over again, it talks about giving back to the Lord. And so at this time, uh, we, uh, we take our minds and we think of all that the Lord has blessed us with and this opportunity that we have to give back to him just a small portion of what we have. Understand that uh, with giving comes sacrifice. The Lord loves that we sacrifice, and he loves that we are cheerful as we give. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we come to this time where uh, 
we are able to physically give back to you. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to make giving back to uh, the Lord through the church a, a part of our weekly uh, uh, rit almost ritual. It's something that uh, ought to be in our budget that uh, we know how much we're going to give back to the Lord because we are to give as we have prospered. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, in our prosperity. Help us to be cheerful givers. Help those that use these monies in the church to use it for the furtherance of your word and for helping those in need. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We are going to sing a children's song now. Uh, it was one of uh, our favorite children's songs when we used to bring our kids up to the front pew uh, before uh, worship service. It's called, I've Got the Joy, 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 Joy. So uh, if you know the song, sing along with us. If not, listen to the words, and it may be catchy enough that uh, you'll like it and you'll want to sing it. <clears throat> I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart, where? where? Down in my heart, I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus, down in my heart, where? Down in my heart to stay. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart, where? Down in my heart, where? Down in my heart, I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart, where? Down in my heart to stay. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer, where? Down in the depths of my heart, where? Down in the depths of my heart, where? Down in the depths of my heart, I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I hope that you enjoyed that last song. I haven't sung it in a long, long time. That brings back good memories. Uh, if you uh, saw a little tint of joy or happiness, uh, that's what the lesson is about. Two weeks ago, I, uh, uh, I delivered a lesson called Joy, Joy, Joy. And uh, I promised you part two, but uh, I had a lesson in between. And now you get part two, Joy, Joy, Joy. If you turn your Bibles to the 126th Psalm, Psalm 126, I'll give you a moment if you want to read along with me, Psalm 126. Uh, this song is about uh, the thanksgiving that the children of Israel had over their return from the Babylonian captivity. And this was the psalm that was written for that. And it says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Pretty neat psalm, isn't it? And I think it fits very, very well into uh, my message this evening. Notice, the psalmist says uh, in verse 4, Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the streams in the Negev. 
Now, uh, geographically speaking, the Negev was in the southern part of the land of Israel where they do not get much rain. And very often the riverbeds are dry most of the year. When the rains do come farther north, then those riverbeds fill up with water that, and, and by the way, that can happen very, very quickly. And there was a, a joy when the riverbeds filled up. It, it brought, uh, this joy was brought to the people who lived in the southern region of Negev. And so, um, we, we understand the joy. And so you get kind of an inside look at the psalm. So with that being said, these, these full streams of water brought joy to the residences who lived in the city. Because remember, uh, they didn't have faucets and taps and bathtubs and all of those things. They depended on the bodies of water uh, and the wells that they dug for their water supply. Even if they were able to irrigate some of their crops, uh, it had to come from there. And so it, it brought great joy when these riverbeds were filled with water. Now, in uh, Psalm chapter 2, uh, verse 13, we, we have something else that's kind of interesting. And the point that the psalmist makes is that joy is fullness. As the riverbeds filled, these people were joyful. And I see the metaphor here. That means when we are joyful, we are filled. You know, people crave things that bring them joy, that bring them joy and satisfaction. But to many people, um, <laughs> something very, very sad takes place. And that is that their schedule or schedules are so filled that their lives are empty. And the emptiness is the lack of joy. And with that, they, they go into meaningless activities, into sinless activities, sinful activities that they hope will bring them joy. They're like the people described by Jeremiah. In Jeremiah uh, chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew from them for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Understand, in areas of Israel where they did not get rain on a regular basis, the uh, the people built these wells, brick-lined wells into the ground, and, and they were called cisterns, and they were to store water. And as long as the cisterns had integrity to them, the water could be stored. But if the cistern developed a crack in it, then the water would escape from that crack, and it would leave the cistern empty. Hence, the scripture, the fountain of living waters to hew from themselves cisterns that were broken. Many people today, sadly enough, have broken cisterns, broken water vats that do not hold the waters that can bring them joy. And so they turn to Many turn to worldly things that they think can uh, can bring them some type of joy. From alcohol, to drugs, to illicit uh, materials, even, even the materialism, even the, the great love of money, it gets thrown into there. Uh, these people become idol worshipers. And the idol worshipers are all wrapped around man-made things. And so many in our society are pursuing things that they perceive will bring them joy. 
They, they pursue money, but find that money in itself will not bring them joy. Do you know what? When we die, all of the money that we accumulate will no longer be ours. Now you will say, well, I'll leave a legacy. I'll leave my money to people that I care about. But you know what? Now it's their money. It's not our money. The joy part of it is gone. All those things and many others, whatever they might be, those things, those empty things that we look forward to that would might, that would might bring us joy are leaky, cracked cisterns because eventually the water will run out and the joy will be there no longer. And so since this message is entitled Joy, 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 where do we get that joy? Well, we continue using the metaphor of water because we started that, you know, when the waters of the Negev filled up and the people had water and they had a fullness and they had joy because of that fullness. God said and talked about the fountains of living water. In John chapter 1, verse 14 and 16, here are his words. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. Glory as the only begotten Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. For his fullness, for of his fullness, we have all received and grace upon grace. And then further on in John 7, verses 37 and 38, again, using this water metaphor, it says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of water. Remember how important water was to the people then. Just as important as it is to us today. Today we, we take it for granted. We go to the, we go to the faucet. We go to the tap. We even buy expensive bottled water. You see people walking around with their bottles of water, uh, all day long because it's readily available. It wasn't always. However, we do understand today that water is an important part of our diet because it helps to regulate all the things that go within us. With that saying, we'll use the water metaphor again. When one is baptized, Okay, when one is baptized, and that is by immersion in water, he is filled with the Spirit of Christ that indwells him. That's what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Repent and be baptized. Go into the water and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so what we do then is we make a decision. The decision that we make is to fill our lives. All right? Is to fill our lives. And as we fill our lives, we are to fill our lives with the characteristics of God. Joy fills our life just assuredly as water fills a cistern. And Peter described this for us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, when he said, And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but you believe in him, now get this, 
you greatly rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and full of glory. Do we seek that joy? Do we seek the joy that is inexpressible? That is filled with glory? That's what we are supposed to be all about. And so I ask us this evening, what are we filled with? If we want inexpressible joy, we must fill our lives with those qualities that bring us closer to God because we can only find the joy when we find it in our God. Now, there's an interesting little um, uh, verse in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, that Paul says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Notice there's a contrast between being filled with wine, as some people do today, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul makes that very, very clear to us over and over again. In Colossians 3, 16, he says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. And he also explained in Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, this, and I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. Now, that word righteousness, we see it all the time. Understand, the root word for righteousness is right. Being righteous is doing what is right. And what is right are those things that will get us closer to the Lord. What is right is exhibiting those fruit of the Spirit that Paul tells us about in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. We are to engender these virtues or qualities. Why? Because they bring us closer to the Lord. And that's where we find full joy. Now, again, we, we can't minimize the importance of water in our lives and to the great extent when the psalmist was writing the importance because they were dependent upon rains to fill the streams and to fill the, the riverbeds so that they would have this water. Uh, uh, this was inexpressible, and this brought inexpressible physical joy to these people. And so the last question that I leave you with this, uh, with this evening is, with what are you filling your lives? The psalmist said, joy is fullness. If we are to have the joy, 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 it is only then that we can have fullness of life. How does that come about? God can give us tremendous joy if we fill our lives with the characteristics and the qualities and the uh, the, the virtues that he is filled with and that Jesus exhibited when he walked upon the earth. Jesus concluded 
a message about discipline by saying these words in John chapter 15 and verse 11. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Goes back to the psalmist. Joy is fullness. You see how the words just um, intertwine with one another from Old Testament to New Testament, from Old Testament till the to the teachings of Jesus Christ. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Joy is fullness when we fill our lives with those things that we should fill them with. Let's strive day by day to fill our lives with things that bring us true joy. The fullness that we have that we only get from our relationship with God and through his son, Jesus Christ. That begins for us when we come to the Lord and we say, I want Jesus to be a part of my life. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm sorry for the things that I've done in the past. I repent of those things. And I pray as I am baptized that as I go into the waters, I will rise a new creature. It's what the Lord has instructed us to do through his word to become his children. If you have not become a child of God as yet, I've laid out the instructions, confession and repentance and baptism. If you need that this evening, uh, we're at the ready for you. You have but to contact us and we will be there. We will help you in any way that we can to get you started on your Christian walk and in your Christian life. So you will receive the joy that comes in fullness and filling our lives with the things that bring us closer to God. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we've had uh, to uh, sing praises to you, to observe your supper, and then to get into your word and, and uh, hopefully uh, use the word as a springboard to a lesson that each of us can find usable in our lives. If we are to find the joy that, uh, that we want to have in our lives, we need to make sure we understand that joy is fullness. And it only uh, comes to fruition when that fullness is how close that we get to our God. Help us to strive each day of our lives to do things that would please you, uh, that would make you happy with us as your children. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to dwell, uh, your, your spirit to dwell in us. Help us that, that uh, we may understand the joy that there is in being a Christian and the joy that we find in a wonderful relationship with you, our God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Be with us this evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. These are the days of